Hi, I'm Kristen Jack Foney, and I am here today to talk to you about how to log a bug. So why does it matter how a bug is logged? Well, first of all, if a developer can't reproduce the bug, they might close the bug out without fixing it. If the bug doesn't have proper repro steps, time will be wasted communicating back and forth with the tester. If a developer doesn't understand the bug, they may only fix part of the bug. If the bug is not properly documented, the team can't refer back to it at a later date if there is a regression and the bug appears again. So let's take a look at the components of a well-logged bug. First of all, it has a good title, it has an accurate description, it has environment details, it has good steps to reproduce, it includes an expected and actual result, and it may include a screenshot or a stack trace if those are helpful. Let's take a look at a sample bug to log. We'll imagine that we have a typical contact information form and there's an existing contact in the contact list that has an invalid email address. The user is attempting to edit the contact info. They make any change to the contact and then the updated info doesn't save. Let's see how we log this bug. So we begin with the title. The title should begin with the area of the application it is referring to. This makes it very helpful to refer back to later. If you can easily sort by the uh, area of the application. It should then continue with a concise statement of the problem. So here's a title that's not so great. Contact form not saving. There's a lot that's missing here. We're missing the application area and we're also missing some key details. A better way would be to say contact list, form not saving when editing a contact with an invalid email. There's enough details there that it will be a lot easier for people to go back and find this bug if they need to later. Next, we have the description. The description should describe the issue in one sentence. A good format is when I do X, then Y happens. So here we have a description up top that is not a good description. I can't save when I edit a contact. There's a lot that's missing here, especially the fact that the contact has an existing invalid email. So down below, we have the right way. When I am editing a contact and the contact has an existing invalid email, then I am unable to save my edits. Environment details. So important things to include here would be which environment the issue was found in, what browser was being used, what build was used, and if a mobile device was used, which OS and which model. So for wrong in environment details, it would be just to say Windows. Lots of people are using Windows. Is the bug found absolutely everywhere in every single build? A right way to list the details would be found in the QA environment on Chrome, Firefox, and Edge using build 17.3.0. Steps to reproduce. It's important to include configuration and login information, meaning what user you were logged in as, but make sure not to include common knowledge because that's just a waste of space and makes it harder to read. Do include clearly defined procedures. So here are a couple of wrong examples. Uh, first of all, edit the contact with an invalid email address and save. That doesn't give enough details. Is the developer supposed to edit the contact by including an invalid email address or are they supposed to be editing the contact that already has an invalid email address? But the next example is also wrong. It has too many details. Navigate to contactlist.com. Probably the developer knows how to get to your application. Click the login button, type username one in the username field and so on. The developer probably knows how to log in to the application. It's fine to include login details like username and password, but you don't need to tell the developer how to log in. So this is better. Locate or configure a contact to have an invalid email address in the database. Go to the contact list page and click on the contact to edit it. Make any change to the contact. Click the save button. 
then return to the contact list page and notice that the change has not saved. Very clear, very concise. Next, expected and actual results. This is really helpful, especially when you are working with very complicated features that have very complicated rules. Six months from now, you might not remember what the rules were for this particular area of the application. So you want to clearly state what behavior you were expecting and then clearly state what behavior you got instead. So the top example is okay, expected, contact saved, actual, contact not saved. But the lower example is much clearer, expected results. When I edit a contact that has an invalid email address, I should be able to save the changes to the contact. Actual results, the changes to the contact are not saved. Finally, screenshot or stack trace. Remember to only include a screenshot or a stack trace if they are going to be helpful. For example, a screenshot could demonstrate a rendering problem, like if a button was partially off a screen. A stack trace is helpful if it clearly describes some kind of error. So here's a stack trace you wouldn't want to include. Exception, an unknown error occurred. That's going to be totally unhelpful to your developer. And then here's a screenshot that's not particularly helpful. What is this showing the developer? Does the developer know every single one of the contacts in the contact list so that they can see that the contact hasn't been changed? Really, this is providing no information. But here's an example of a time where you would want to include a stack trace. It says error, message, contact validation failed, email email is invalid. And it says exactly where in the add contact file that error is generating. So this could be extremely helpful to the developer. So putting it all together, it looks like this. It's got a very clear title that shows the application area. It's got a one sentence description. It lists the environment details. It has clear, concise steps to repro. It has an expected result an actual result, and finally, it includes a helpful stack trace. I hope you found my talk helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this talk, then please check out more of my work at thinkingtester.com. Thanks.